Welcome to Only the Greatest Podcast, where we explore the vital connection between f- fitness and success in all areas of your life. We are your hosts, Daryl, Philip, Sean, and our goal is to help you become the greatest version of yourself. This show is brought to you by our one and only sponsor, which is ourself, OTG Fitness. OTG Fitness is our private personal training gym located on the south side of Houston in Webster, Texas. You can learn more about OTG Fitness by visiting otgfitness.com or searching OTG Fitness on any social media platform. If you happen to find any value in this show, all we ask is that you leave a quick review and mention specifically what helped you out. If you're listening on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with anyone you think may need to hear this. We are just a couple guys that found life-changing benefits from fitness, and we want to share that with the world. So every single like, mention, and review hint, hint, really (laughs) does mean so much to us. Help us grow this show and everything OTG is about by sharing with somebody today. Share it. Right now. Let it be known to the world. Don't wait. Yeah. You know what I kind of miss? I kind of miss when we had the second part at the bottom and you said... Uh, the last sentence was, you can find us on any social media platform. And I go, all of them. I still want to throw that in there sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to mess all of them. I just, just want to mess up the flow. <laughs> I do miss that. You know what I, I miss also? Well, I was listening to- My sunglasses? To- Sean, I was going to wear sunglasses too. I was going to wear them. Damn it. Dude. Well, earlier I was listening a couple days ago. Actually, I was listening to some old shows Mm -hmm. because I was thinking about maybe we could redo some of the old topics. Sure. Since the show is so much better now and everything. And when we first started, there was a zero (laughs) intro. Oh, yeah. And it was just like hit record. What's winging up, guys? it, winging it. No, yeah. no, 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 winging it completely yeah. every time. I love that though. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you gotta start somewhere. We're kind of yeah, swing man. that back around after we get the recorded intro. Maybe we can start doing. Maybe that we again. can just start. Yeah, because we have like a recorded. Yeah, yeah. We'll play the recorded, know. and then we can just talk yeah. about whatever like we did last time. Yeah, that'd be great. Down with that. I'm yeah, down with yeah, that. Like we would just be mid conversation, and I would reach over and hit, <laughs> yeah. uh, hit record, <laughs> and it would be like whatever we were on. Happen. That was that it. was the intro for the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we're more structured. Yeah. Yes, sir, yes, Speaking sir. of, we have a topic. Look at Phil's Dang. some zoom and focus action. This one was this one was tough too because there's kind of a lot going on here. And I was yeah. trying to keep it as simple as possible. Well, like I said, um, whenever you first walked in, is this is this is us. This is yeah. what especially you and I have talked about over the years. Now Sean is a part of the team, and he. He was telling you about mm-hmm. how he adjusted his, uh, the way he's tracking mm-hmm. and that's what kind of spurred this. So what we're going to talk about today are the basics of tracking your nutrition. Um, we got, so we got a few bullet points on here, pros, cons methods or ways to do it. And then, uh, we have at the bottom, we call tricks of the trade. So mm-hmm. basically stuff that we've learned over the years of tracking that, uh, has helped us or we learned not to do so that we can be better, right? Stuff like that. Exactly, and in my opinion, tracking your intake for a short period of time is the number one thing Mm -hmm. that you can do to to be successful with this whole thing. At least to figure out, you gotta have the baseline. That's right, yeah. And uh, which is when somebody comes into OTG Fitness to sign up, that is one of the first oh, yeah. uh, homework, right? Yeah, is, uh, Homework assignments is track for two weeks. Depending on what the goal is of the yeah. of the person, right? So sure. if you're listening to this and your goal is to lose weight or gain weight, change your body composition in any way, th- this is the number one thing that you can do to learn a lot about mm-hmm. yourself, about your habits, mm-hmm. uh, about what's going on, what's going wrong. Um, th- there's just so many benefits to it. And there are some, some cons as well, which mm-hmm. we're going to go over. And sure. like Daryl's saying, you know, we got a couple points here. We're gonna start with the pros and cons. We're gonna talk about methodology, like different ways that you can do it. Uh, and then we'll go into those little tricks of the trade that sure. we learned. And you know, guys, <clears throat> that to, just to piggyback on what Phil said, what I tell anybody in my life, uh, that asked me for advice is, is this is true with your finances and with fitness it, you have to be tracking what's coming in and what's going out. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that you necessarily need to track your caloric output because that's kind of tough unless you have a really nice like watch or uh, tracker, but you got to know what is going in 
And just like a bank account, you have to know what goes in and what goes out. Otherwise, you know, you'll overdraft, you'll, you'll make some, uh, bad moves, I mm-hmm. guess, based off because, because of, because of ignorance, because you didn't know, you don't know your budget, you don't know your budget, right? You don't know. A lot of people don't know exactly how much their paycheck is every week, you know, and they don't check it. It just gets direct deposited and, or how much and, they spend, how much they spend, right? <laughs> they don't know exactly how much they spend every month. So, mm-hmm. uh, same thing with calories. You got to know exactly what you're putting in every day and but you have to track the output too but not necessarily the calories you're burning on output but track your your workouts right? i like the, the effort yeah. i like to track effort effort yeah and you don't have to write it down did i resistance mentally. train today yeah, exactly did i do cardio today did i rest today one thing and just real quick i think i didn't have this on our notes here but one thing i think it is important to touch on this uh, when it comes to the outflow mm-hmm. is we don't want to overcomplicate it sure. for one. And then also burning a lot of calories is not a good measure of a good workout. Sure. I used to work out, uh, I used to work before I, uh, opened, OT, quit my job to do OTG fitness full time. Mm-hmm. I, uh, did some personal training part time at some different places. Yep. And one of the places they used heart rate monitors. Awesome. Great. Good tool, whatever. But the problem that I had after someone would get a very high quality resistance training workout, I would see them destroy themselves on the treadmill and just run, run, run. Because they were worried about that. All they wanted was more calorie burn. Mm -hmm. And I just want anyone listening to this right now, you don't have to. One, you're not burning as many calories as you think. Let's be clear about that. It's not. And you don't, to be honest, you probably don't want to know. Yeah. Because you're going to get upset. It's not very many. Mm-hmm. Your uh, bodies are efficient, man. Yeah, your body is. And the, and the more in shape you are, the more efficient it is. Me, because I'm an efficient runner, burn a lot less calories than you. Right. And just generally, just sitting yeah, here. Yeah. Um, coach, coach Sean is running, burns way less calories than I do. Yeah. Right. And then, um, uh, what's the, what's the guy's name? Marathon runner? David Goggins. <laughs> yes that's a good example Stay too hard. Hard. <laughs> oh, um, um i can't think of his name free yeah Kipchoge. yeah Kipchoge, yeah Kipchoge don't burn nothing no yeah no. he's They're very probably, he's running 430 miles god yeah. you know what a savage but <laughs> anyways yeah let's get on track here yeah. speaking of track Ooh. nutrition track. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first bullet point um Basically, uh, why would you make the decision to track? What are the pros and cons of that? So we're going to dive into this. Uh, We're going to start with pros. Um, Awareness of intake. And that is basically everything that Phil just covered is is uh, you got it to track or tracking is going to make you aware. Yeah, I think a big issue is that many people I hesitate to use the word denial, but that's kind of what's going on. They're about, about their actual intake, best, caloric intake. Best case scenario, they're ignorant and yeah. not a rude ignorant. They no, don't no, know. No, no. They just mm-hmm. don't know. The literal ignorant is they mm-hmm. don't know. That's best case scenario. Worst yep. case is they're in denial. Right. Either way, they don't have an awareness of their mm-hmm. actual intake. Right. They, they don't know what's going on. You have to know that. It is it is probably the most important key uh, when it comes to when, when you're talking about tracking and how to be successful if you don't know what your baseline is, you don't know what your intaking is, you're not aware of the actual number, you're not going to be successful. Right. And, and that leads right into this, this second point we mm-hmm. have here, which is you need to know the baseline, mm-hmm. right? By be- becoming aware of what you're taking in, you can create a baseline yep. of what your intake should be. Mm-hmm. And then you can move it up, move it down, change yeah. the macronutrient ratio or, or, for, or whatever. Yeah. Make, for maybe you were talking about a micronutrient issue. You can track that as well. Sure. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm going to give one quick example. We'll hit the next one. So uh, I have a goal of getting to 195 pounds. Um, and I started out like 219 and lowered my calories a little bit and kept them there. And I dropped, 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 dropped till I hit like 204. And I stuck there for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I needed to do one of two things, increase my output, decrease my input. So what did I do? A little bit of both. Added in uh, two days of cardio, took down the uh, carbohydrates, a small percentage, right? Weight started to fall again. So my baseline was what I, which was like 3,400 calories was what I was eating at the time when I stalled out. 
And I knew I had to bring that down a little bit. I had to increase the cardio a little bit, started to fall. So find that baseline. If you're somebody who's maintaining a weight, track what you're putting in and you know, oh, if you're putting in 2,500 calories, that's your body's going to maintain its weight at 2,500. So if you want to gain weight, you got to eat more. If you want to lose weight, you got to eat less. Mm -hmm. Pretty, you yep. know, sim simple math. Yep. Um, Straightforward. And then that when what you just said leads into our next point, which is it gives you the ability to use outcome based decision making. And that's mm -hmm. what we use uh, at OTG when we're speaking with people. We only make decisions based on outcome of action. Mm hmm. What's, what's the facts of the what, matter? What, exactly. What are you doing? Yeah. What happened? And now let's make a change. Yeah. Or maybe you keep doing the same because what happened is good. It was good. Right. Yeah. It's positive. Yeah. So what were you doing? What was the result you got? And this is where the flow chart comes in. Do you like the result? Yes. Start, yeah. <laughs> start back over. Yep. Do you yeah. like the result? No. Why? How, what's, and what do we do about what it? What do we do about it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if you're not tracking and you don't know that, then... Mm -hmm. You don't know yeah. where to go. So cons, we're going to move into cons. And the, fir the first one, Phil nailed it. <laughs> it requires effort. It you does. You got to sit down and do it. And actually got, track. Mm -hmm. That's sit. I was, Sean took the words out of my mouth. Sitting down and either getting on your app or getting on. I'm a, I'm a uh, pen and paper guy. Not really for tracking anymore. I use my fitness pal. Mm -hmm. They should sponsor me. Mm -hmm. um, I got a new one for you. We'll talk about it. Yeah. So um, I, I use that. But I'm at a stage where I'm pretty Good. As long as I know the macros off the top of my head, as long as I use my typical measurements mm -hmm. that I, that I would normally use, I know what the calories are going to be, but, um, sitting down and putting it together is going to take you some time. But the good thing is if you do it once and you understand it well enough, it's going to get easier and easier and That's easier. Right. And it's going to translate to less and less and less time. Now I don't have to plug it. If I know, if I cook my normal stuff for the work week, I don't have to put anything into the app because I already know right. exactly how many uh, pro or calories and macros I'm getting in each meal and what it equates to at the end of the day. I already know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, because there I've is, done it a hundred times. Th there is a barrier of entry yes. to getting started. Sure. And it, it could, it could be as short as, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. It could be as long as two, three hours. Mm -hmm. to, then like, let's just be honest. Let's not try to hide the yeah. fact that it does require effort mm -hmm. to, to do this, you know, and it requires effort over time. Yeah. You know, if you're first getting started and you're first learning every day, you're probably going to struggle a little bit. You're going to struggle for sure. You're going to struggle. It, it just is. You're going to spend a lot of time on your phone or with this journal. Pen and paper is a little more straightforward, which we'll get into the methods here in a second. Um, but either way, you're going to struggle a little bit in the beginning. But as you, when you first started learning to drive, yeah, you was, didn't just it, get it in the, tough. yeah, you didn't just get in the car and hit the freeway. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, you know, you, you had it around the you, residential streets. And, yeah. That's right. You started yeah. in the parking lot, yeah, parking hit a couple yeah. curbs, then yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and uh, then you, then you go to the residential streets. Yep. Uh oh, oh, geez. Uh, I haven't had an, haven't had an issue in the, on the show in yeah, too long. Right. It's been, right. it's been too long, well, sure. but, um, yeah, you know, and, and then you hit, then you hit Palmer. Yep. You hit Palmer. <laughs> <Island. laughs> yeah. 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 Then you make your way to 45. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Even yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You Ooh. can't get on 45. Yeah. You got yeah. 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 the Walmart right yeah, there. Exactly. Mall of the mainland. Mall so of the yeah, mainland. you worked your way up and, yeah. and now driving second nature. Yeah. Now right. it's something we do every single day. And we're going to mm -hmm. talk about this later is you don't have to do it perfect forever, but you need to learn. You have to go through the learning process. Right. And then the last thing is you do have to be cautious of creating an unhealthy relationship with food. Mm -hmm. Food in our culture here in the United States, food uh, is very social. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of events, friends and family. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen someone in a long time, what do you do? You go meet up for dinner. You go, you go, dinner. You go eat. Yeah. You're going on a date. You know, you meet, you meet a significant other. Dinner. You go to, you know, it's all food. You go, yeah. you go to a party. Yeah. yeah food. Food. food to be eaten. Thanks Thanksgiving. Drinks. Food, food, food. <laughs> I mean, yeah. no, there, there's food everywhere. Yeah. So we want to be cautious of not letting this lead to an unhealthy relationship with food. This right. is very rare. Eating disorders are very serious. Yep. And we do not want that to happen. Right. This mm -hmm. is a very serious. Tool. They're uncommon, but they're very serious. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they can happen. So, That's right. you know, and I, there's a bullet point above this that Phil uh, I don't want to say didn't oh, mention. I did kind of skip that. Sorry. Um, and I want to elaborate on a little bit. So he says it, when you start tracking, it may lead to you not being able to eat the things you want, which could lead to an unhealthy relationship. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for example, if there's this one 
thing that you really enjoy to eat and you find out it's massively calorically dense and it's causing you to not hit your macros and then you have to take it out of your diet completely and then it just tar- it snowballs into this problem right where you're like oh well uh, you're having all these cravings because you, you can't eat the thing anymore. And, you know, then you feel bad and you ate too many calories. So the next day you're going to fast and it just creates mm-hmm. this, I th- this. I think a really good example of that is Chipotle. I, that's something that when it came to tracking, I didn't realize how calorie dense it was. So mm-hmm. like when I first started tracking, I would do it calorie based. And I'm like, man, I, there was a day I um, forgot to meal prep. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go to Chipotle. It's relatively healthy. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like looking at it and dude, it's like 1100 they calories. Put oil in the rice. Yeah. 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 yeah so yeah, right. there's, so there's that. And I'm like, holy crap, this is really calorie dense. And is it particularly bad? It's like a bunch of good stuff, I guess, but it's just like, I mean, still 1100 calories. So yeah. it's just right. like, yeah. Just an example <laughs> yeah. of something that when you started tracking, you went, Oh yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's an awareness. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. awareness. Yep. Yeah. So we'll move on to the next methods. So mm-hmm. there's really two main, main ones that we were kind of want to talk about pen and paper, writing it down in a journal or app or tracking with an app of some sort, some type of digital uh, source, right? Yep. So and each of these have their pros and cons, mm-hmm. you know, yep. uh, make your decision. We'll talk about a couple of them. And then if, you know, if nutrition tracking is something you're exploring, um, you can kind of make your decision based upon these pros and cons. Yeah. You know, and Daryl said that at one point he was a pen and paper guy. Yep. Sounds like. For the longest time. And then you switched to to an app. What was the basis behind the decision? You just wanted to. Yeah. Um, so I, I got to where um, I was, I wanted, I, I was on my phone already looking up, mm-hmm. uh, looking up calories, right? Like uh, looking up uh, macros and whatever I was eating so that I could write it down. And then it, it just kind of became more efficient for me to go back and forth from Safari to my fitness pal or, or whatever. And then when you get my fitness pal or something of, or the like, you can do it all right there. Yeah, all right. You the go, one app, you go yeah. into your app, you can either scan the barcode, which is one of the pros of app tracking. Uh, you type in the food and you can typically there's 90, 90, 95% of the food you get at the grocery stores on that app. Mm-hmm. Right. And it'll tell you exactly what the macros are. Boom. Add. Yeah. And it's on. And now it's, it's accounted for. Right? A lot of people start with pen and paper and then they want to graduate to yeah. app tracking, which is kind of what we're talking about here. So we can yeah. talk about the differences between the two and why you might want to choose one or the other. Yeah. If we're talking about pen and paper, we can also use notes on our phone. We're going to yeah. count the notes on your phone as the same as pen and paper. Same the idea. Me- the methodology, yeah. the yeah, idea is true. the same. So the first thing to be aware of when it comes to good old pen and paper or notes on your phone is that it is easy uh, to do. Mm-hmm. You know, you eat, you just write it down real quick and it will help you build the awareness of, of what you're taking in. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't necessarily give you the information that you may need. Like Daryl, yeah. just Daryl yeah. and Sean just mentioned. You go find mm-hmm. it right. and then you got to write it down mm-hmm. and your phone becomes a one-stop shop. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and <clears throat> within the pen and paper, there are kind of two different styles, which I think we should go over as well. There's mm-hmm. the style where Daryl's talking about where each thing you actually go do the research. Mm-hmm. Well, before you do that, you might not even be worried about that. A lot of times it'll have to do. That's a little do, more advanced. Yeah, that's a little more. That's kind of your next step up because your most basic level is just write it down. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about nutrition. Yeah, what don't did worry. I eat at all? Don't yeah. worry about calories. Don't worry about macronutrients. What did I eat? What did you eat? Most people know good and bad. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows more salad, less pizza, right? Yeah. yeah to keep it very, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? but in general, yeah. in general. So just by writing it down and looking at it at the end of the day, you can probably pick out yeah. some things you did good. Mm-hmm. For, and I, I don't want to use bad, but air quotes, bad yeah. decisions, and, you know? And, uh, I always tell people like when people, uh, especially people that are very early stages beginning, I tell them to do that, Mm -hmm. to write everything they eat down in a day or a week or whatever. And then I tell them to start off. I take one thing out that, you know, is bad. If you have three Dr. Peppers a day, take Dr. Peppers out or, or whatever. Right. That's just Mm -hmm. an example. Take one of them. Like one (laughs) Dr. Pepper out and add a walk to the end of your driveway and back and do that for a week. And then you take one more thing out. And you, you know what I'm saying? Have you read that book, Atomic Habits? I have not. Okay. It sounds like something that would, like they talk about starting with the smallest of the small, small like driving to the gym, sitting in the parking lot, 
yeah. for a week. <laughs> really? and, then, and then next week, walk in. And yeah. then the next week, walk on the treadmill. And then the next week. So by the time you're five weeks in, you're on the bench press or yeah. something mm, like that. But go. that very much, what, what you're talking about, um, or what we were talking about before that, which is a great piece of advice. I love that. Um, is you, you have to, if you want to take the step up, you're going to have to go do the research and learn the relationship between macronutrients and calories if you want to measure precisely. Maybe right. you're not worried about that yet. You're kind of taking the method that I just mentioned where you're just writing it down, not worried about calories mm -hmm. and just looking at the overall picture. You see Oreos, you see Doritos. Yeah, everybody, take one out. Yeah, everybody knows that's bad. But if you want to be measuring precisely, you're going to have to learn the relationship. I and mean, we're not going over this right now. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be on our advanced. Yeah, the, exactly. Which we're going to come out with maybe in here in a couple of weeks or maybe next week, but the relationship between how macronutrients lead to calories, right? If yep. you want to measure precisely. Sure. And if you do want to measure precisely, you're going to have to use a food scale. Yep. Right. The food scale has yeah. got to come into play at some point. Yeah. If you oh, yeah. want to measure precisely. Definitely. Yeah. Which are super cheap. You can yeah, buy them on Amazon bucks. for like 15 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got two at the house because in case one battery goes out, if something looks wonky, I'll check it on the other one. But that's just because I'm OCD and I'm weird. Uh, <laughs> got a one more thing. Scale. One more go. thing. Yeah. One more thing I want to add on. Yeah. Backup scale. <laughs> the one I, I want to add on here that's not really fitness. Um, but I did notice, and it is, I'm pretty sure it's a fact if you look up the studies. When I was writing it down, I remembered it better. Mm, yeah, like, you kind of internalize it. I could recall. It I could mm -hmm. recall it better. Sure, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, I couldn't. I didn't even go get my journal out of the other room. Oh yeah, I remember. I did. I ate this, and it was this many calories, right? And so I, I remembered it more, and because on the phone it remembers it for you, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so you just type it in, and you walk away. Which whatever you can always get on your app, and but look. you start to get better when you're right, actually writing it down. Yeah. And the goal here is, and we're going to mention this later, the goal here is to not do this forever. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Some people do, and that's great if that's what you want to do, but mm -hmm. most people let's be, are not going to do it forever. Yeah. This is a period of time. They're going to familiarize themselves. Mm -hmm. They're going to get good at it. And then they're going to do what I do and basically understand. I have a pretty good idea of uh, calorie count right. on, on all. Daryl can look food. at a plate of food and tell you the macronutrients yeah. and calories. As long as it's close to, or the foods that I eat on a regular basis, which is like 10, 11 different foods. I've counted them that mm -hmm. I eat regularly. I can tell you pretty exactly. And I can look at it and go, okay, that's about four ounces. Yeah. Cause you've been, you've been yeah. through an education process and that's yeah. kind of the last the thing. Same we, way. Yeah. Last thing that we mentioned here uh, on the pen and paper part is that it just leads to heightened awareness of quote unquote bad foods. Uh, or overeating on snacks that you can now start to use outcome-based decision-making mm -hmm. because you wrote it down. You know, that's bad. Let me eliminate this yep. thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. So we'll, we'll dive off into app tracking now. Um, <clears throat> like Phil, Phil's first bullet point. It's more precise. It's more instant, right? You type it in, boom, it pops mm -hmm. up, but you do have to learn how to navigate the app, right? Yes. You do have to, you do have to learn how to, you have to download it. You got to familiarize yourself with it. Mm -hmm. hey, but you know, like any app, uh, you know, most things on your phone or actually everything on your smartphone is through an app of some sort, whether it's a app that came with the phone or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and the hardest part here that I've seen and just keep in mind that I've been doing this a long time mm -hmm. and I've worked with hundreds of people, uh, doing this, using the, an app and a food scale and serving sizes correctly is much more difficult than, than people give credit. Oh yeah. I've sat down with several people that say, yeah, I'm good. I've used the app before. I'll just start doing that again. Cause they've lost weight in the past using an app tracking mm -hmm. and like, yeah, I'll just start doing that again. And I'm like, uh, I understand, but would you mind if I just sat down with you and make sure that you're using it correctly? Yeah. Very few. Very few. Yep. It's very, there's a lot of entries on these apps, uh, serving sizes with serving sizes. Math. Math. Man, that's a huge one. Yeah. Sean and I were talking about it earlier. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of times I'll ask people, he gave me a pop quiz on serving sizes and I <laughs> failed miserably. <laughs> and I so, was like, Oh shit, I'm one of those people. <laughs> so uh, the question that I'll ask someone is, and meat, Usually is in ounces, right? So four ounces. Very men never eat four ounces of anything. Mm. Let's say you eat seven ounces, but mm. the serving is four. How many servings is that? What'd you say? Hold on. What was the question? If it's a four ounce serving, yep. like of chicken, yeah. and you you eat seven ounces, 
That's 1.8 serves. One point, almost, yeah, 1. Almost, 1.75. 1. 1.75 yeah, serves. Exactly. But so, people do, So it's almost two serves. Yeah. But they can't they right. can't put it into that. They just put well, they just they just put it. One serve. And it, right. it gets labeled as one. Right. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. that entry, the the macros aren't right on that entry. Right. Yeah. So I usually recommend people create their own entries. Yeah. Um you, you don't have to do that. But anyways, it just requires more time and education to make sure you're doing it right. And my last point on this is it is super important that you get it right. Yeah. Doing it wrong is worse than not doing it all because if you do it wrong and you don't get results, now you think it doesn't work. You're going to blame mm-hmm. the app. Yeah. It's not that it doesn't work. It's that you just did it incorrectly and that's not your fault. But you need to educate yourself if you're going to take this method. Which apps do you guys use? Uh, I use my Fitness Pal, which okay. they recently went rogue. Macros first. Macros first is the new one. Yes, is the good and one. It's uh, all the features of my Fitness Pal uh, in a free version of the paid version is now free. It also had the, my favorite thing about the macros first thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, two things: if your food is has a nutrition label, but it's not in their library. You can take a picture of the nutrition label and it'll create it for you. Okay. Nice. So yeah. that's nice. That's Super cool. cool. Yeah. That's one. So that my fitness really pal, the paid version, you can use a barcode scanner. Yeah. It can hold up any food that has a barcode on it and 90, 95% of them. But if this be. doesn't have a barcode. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and if it doesn't have an entry, the, yeah. the problem with my fitness pal is they just have so many entries that are wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So macros first is better about that. And then the other thing that I really like about it is from the home screen, Let's say, because dinner becomes like a math problem, right? Mm -hmm. And this is getting a little bit more advanced. So this is kind of getting out of our basics for today. But just real quick, uh, just so I can kind of explain to Daryl the benefits uh, and why I made the switch is on the home screen where it's showing your meals, right? Your food Mm -hmm. entries. Let's say you get to dinner and you need 36 grams of protein. You can put that. Have you hit her? and, (laughs) And it'll tell you how much chicken to eat. Okay. To get to your protein oh, goal. Oh, wow. Super cool. And vice versa. Okay. Yeah. And so it, it, it's pretty nice. It's a cool little feature. Very you don't have to go into the food yeah. and change to the serving size that you ate to and figure out how yeah. much protein. Yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's nice. Yeah. So we're going to, uh, we're moving gonna, on. We're going to breeze over to my favorite. You want to do tricks of the trade next? Uh, let's go with, oh, now the last thing I want to put here on the advantages uh, on the pros of app tracking is it allows for precise changes of variables. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's pretty important. Get back to the outcome-based decision-making thing. By using an app and knowing exactly how many verifying. calories, and confirming, yeah, verifying that you're getting accurate information, you can now make more precise changes, like mm-hmm. Daryl was mentioning earlier. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the last thing with uh, pros of app tracking. Sure. All right, so um, other tricks of the trade or pro tip. Yeah, pro tips. Pro tips. Pro tips. So that I just thought of one I want to go ahead since we're kind of on the topic still. It's not on here, but I, it just popped into my head. Understand that your app, like MyFitnessPal, uh, at least in the beginning, uh, they when it came to serving size of meat, it was raw weight. How much did it weigh before you cooked it? Mm-hmm. Not after you cooked it. You can see how that can be a problem, right? Especially with beef if it's you cook a lot of water out yeah you cook a lot of water out Mm -hmm. and beef you cook a lot of fat out typically right so you got to understand that if they're telling you hey it's a four ounce serve figure out is it four ounces before you cook it or after you cook it Mm yeah because i can tell you right now four ounces after you cook it is less than three it's a lot different (laughs) yeah it's like three or less ounces Uh right it's a lot different if you cook six ounces you're getting less than five cooked I would say it's like 20%, 20 yeah, to 30% 20, less. 20, 30% less, depending on, right, how long you cook it, how... <laughs> and this changes, the, I, I recommend... I didn't, know, I didn't know it was that big of a difference, yeah, it's really. Quite a, it's quite yeah. a big difference. And I recommend just always doing it cooked. Off yeah. the cook. And, yeah. and that's... Make sure that the app you're using knows accounting for it cooked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, right. yeah. The app that um, I'm using right now does, it has yeah. like, you know, with cooking or chicken or, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Man, Dry rice cool. versus, yeah, yeah. Uh, versus steamed rice. Steamed rice. Yeah. And that can make a difference between how much water you use. Exactly mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So just keep an eye on that. That's pro tip number one, yep. a little more advanced. We can talk about it on the next one. Pro tip number two. I like this one. Phil's got 
Use pre-portioned this items. This is actually Sean's. This was oh. Sean's idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> this just in. Sean with the new entry. <laughs> yeah, we're, I was. Uh, we, yeah, we were talking about um, like peanut butter, uh-huh. and I was saying that I Ooh. use. Um, I was like, man, I feel like it's kind of hard to track peanut butter. You have to yeah. take it out, put it on something else, and then track it. It seems like kind of a mess. So what I use is I'll use those little like um, it's on there. Those little. Um, uh, individual peanut butter cups track just one of those and then i'll use it on like two rice cakes and then yeah. I'll, i'm good yeah because so, it's yeah. pre-portioned, pre-portioned. There's, no, yeah, pre-portioned. There's, no, there's no guess on yeah. how much and then mm-hmm. i'm not tell me if i'm wrong here daryl but is your pro tip to put it on the food scale yep. zero it out and then use the negative number yep there you go yeah so yeah. if you want to get 32 ounces which is a serve of peanut butter in most cases 28 <laughs> to 32 depending uh-huh. on the brand yeah uh i know that because i track uh, works great for egg whites as well. So you put your jar whites. of peanut butter on the food scale. You zero it out. You, mm-hmm. Is it tar or tear? Tear. 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 You tear yeah. it. And then if you want 32 uh, grams. Make the number go negative. Go to get peanut butter on your spoon until you get to negative 32 and yeah. that's 32 grams. And I like to do that mm. with the carton of egg whites as well. Put Same the carton thing. on there. T- take the lid off. Carton on. Tear. Yep. And then negative. Put it back on there and now you yeah. know how much you got. Uh, egg whites is a little easier for me because as long as you don't have a heavy hand when you're pouring, you can kind of, you know, if you got your bowl on there, you just drink you, it right out of the carton. Then, then, like. Yeah. Well, and you need 46 <laughs> grams, which is a serve of egg whites. Uh, <laughs> and you slowly pour it into your bowl. As long as you're not heavy handed, mm-hmm. you can usually hit it. But peanut butter is harder to do that way. Yeah. If you're scooping out, scooping out, and then you hit 40 grams and you're trying to to, to, to take the peanut butter off. Yeah. Then you're tempted yeah. to lick the spoon and then you eat it anyway. <laughs> Happens to me all the but time. With, with egg whites, I usually do egg whites in combination with whole eggs. Yeah. So I crack whole ah. eggs in there, kind of scramble them up, and then I'll pour egg whites yeah. straight into the pan. Dang. Yeah. You know, that's the okay. way I kind of usually do yeah. it. But, so if you're pouring um, straight in the pan, definitely... Pro yeah, tip. Yeah, Use the a, negative numbers on yeah, the scale. Yeah, that's really helpful. And then uh, cre- I, I mentioned this earlier, creating all of your own foods within your app. If you are going for app tracking, don't rely on the entries that are already in the system. Mm-hmm. Create a lot of your own foods and that will help so much. And you can use those foods to create recipes. And now you're kind of doing the Daryl method where he knows you know, he does the same recipes on a yeah. regular basis. And you can have way, Daryl's list is pretty short because that's yeah. what is, that's what helps him in his busy lifestyle. Gut health, busy. And gut, gut health. Gut health and busy lifestyle. I keep yeah. the list of foods that I eat regularly very small. And mm. you can expand that list by creating all of them. And this is kind of where we're going back to spending the time in the beginning, right? So you're going to have to sit. And when I mentioned it could be a few hours, this Mm. is what I was talking about. Yeah. It could take you a few hours to input all the foods that you kind of eat on a regular basis, make the recipes. But now your time spent on a daily basis is much shorter. It's going down. Yeah. Because you're just adding the foods real quick. You know, they're accurate. Yeah. Yeah. So you add them, you make sure you plug them all in, you save them and boom, you know, you're eating hundred grams of white rice cooked, 170 grams of 96, four beef cooked. That's what I eat regularly right now. And then I'll switch up. So I have a chicken version, a beef version. Mm-hmm. I have a t- turkey version of uh, daily meals that I, depending on what I feel like making that week, right? Yep. Um, create recipes, keep you t- consistent, what Phil said. And I got the last one, and this is one of my favorites. And then I got one more after that too. Okay. So uh, this is my last one, and then we got Phil's. Um, I have a list on my notes called uh, the heavy hitters or heavy hitter food items, right? And what it is, is Phil mentioned earlier when you, when it's five o'clock and you're like, you know, I got to go to bed in a few hours and I'm short 40 grams of protein or whatever that I have to hit this to hit my goal. Go to the heavy hitters list. What do you got on there? You got Greek yogurt. You got protein powder. You got chicken breast. You got lean ground beef. You got steak. And the list goes on of heavy hitter protein foods. Uh, so, you know, okay, I can get my, uh, I can, dude, I'll tell you what, if you need 80 to 100 grams of protein, I can get my, I can eat a can of tuna. Boom. Depending on the tuna, that's 40, 40 Mm -hmm. grams of protein right there. Uh, Most tunas are, I think, 35 to 40. Um, You can get a serve of Greek yogurt, which is 170 grams. I know that. Uh, Put a little stevia in there. How many, uh, there's 20... 
five grams of protein, I think, in that. 170 grams of, uh, of Greek, yogurt? Greek yogurt. Yeah, it depends on the brand. Some are like they rank 19 on the low end. Like 19 like, on the low like end the, and 25 uh, on the high end. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It so 19 to 25. And then you take that Greek yogurt, you put a stevia in there, and you put a scoop of MTS whey. Bam. You're at like 75, 80 grams mm-hmm. of protein. Protein hacks. Protein hacks. So. Go. Yeah. And nice. protein's the most important one, but you can use, I got heavy hitters that are carbs too, that are fats, fats. I got peanut butter on there, mm-hmm. any type of oil, olive oil, right. add it to the rice, you know, whatever, uh, peanut butter, th- that's going to add up fast. You ever measured a, a serving of peanut butter? It'll humble you. Yeah. <laughs> depressing. <laughs> yeah. It's depressing. Uh, and then carbohydrates. Uh, what can I pull straight out of the bag? Or put straight into the microwave that within minutes, within seconds or minutes, I can I can have 100 carbs. Mm-hmm. I can have 80 carbs, right? Cream of rice, oatmeal, breads, fruits. Uh, fruits. The list goes on, right? Pasta, which pasta is little. You got to boil it and everything. But like heavy hitters, I can pull straight out of the pantry and eat. Or I can pull straight out of the pantry, add water, nuke it for a minute. Boom, I got 45 grams of cream of rice, which is a serve in most cases. And bam, you're nailing your, uh, throw some peanut butter in there. You got your protein and fat for the day. And most of the time. Or your carbs and fat for the day, I'm sorry. Most of the time, the list you're going to need is the protein list. Right, yeah, most of the time. You know, but everyone's in different situations. Yeah, yeah, so make your heavy hitters list Mm -hmm. of foods that you know. And, you know, when you got a heavy hitter, you got to be careful of, uh, you don't want something that's just calorically dense all the way around. It doesn't right. really fit into that. You want something that's protein dense, something that's low, carb dense, yeah. something that's fat High dense. protein, low fat. Yeah. yeah. High protein, low fat. High carb, low fat. Mm-hmm. High carb, low protein. Because uh, when, you, when fat, you have- Low carb. When you have a lot of allocation for each one left, yeah. it's easy. It's easy, right. Yeah. You need this list when you're in special circumstances. Yeah, power list, mm-hmm. heavy hitters. Yeah, power list. I all like right, it. go ahead, Phil. Uh, my last one- um, kind of where I'm at in my life and what I recommend most people's goal to be in the long run is to learn how to use the food scale, Mm -hmm. learn how to measure your portions in time, like start as slow as you need. You know, this process can take anywhere on the low end about a month. If we're going to be honest, um, it's, it's always going to take you at least you need to do this for a month. Mm -hmm. Usually two weeks. Uh, if you're really smart, like you're just like a hyper intelligent person and you're really consistent or you're hyper focused. Great. Two weeks can probably do it, but a month is more, uh, reasonable. It could take as long as three to six months to really kind of learn all this. Right. Yeah. Once you do that, what I usually recommend to people, and if you're listening to this, you're going to be one of those people is for about one week out of every Maybe month if you're new, maybe one week out of every quarter if you're a little more experienced. So one week out of every three months, pull that food scale back out, get out your pen and paper, get out your app, whatever method you want to go with, track your food Mm -hmm. for one week, every month or every quarter, depending on your experience level and your comfort level, because what's going to happen, this is me. I've been doing this for a long time, Mm -hmm. helping a lot of people. This is what I do for a career, right? I still, when I stop tracking, that serving of peanut butter gets bigger. Turns into one and a half so next week, two. and then you're lying to yourself. Next month it turns into two, and then I'm like, oh, you know, I have a little honey on there. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. A little honey on there. <laughs> a little bit of honey. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I start with like you know, like a little a squeeze. Honey's on my heavy hitter list. Yeah, I put Carbs. a squeeze. I'll put a squeeze. Yeah. I'll put a squeeze of honey on there. But next week when I do it, a little, a little heavier, long, it turns into a drizzle. Yeah, yeah it turns into <laughs> and a drizzle. And it's a faucet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so slowly but surely, these things yeah. start to creep away from you. Yeah. And that's why people slowly but surely gain, gain weight, weight yeah. over time. Portion sizes are going up. Yep. Serving sizes are going up. What? Little at a time mm-hmm. until they're well above their baseline. That's right. And yep. And you just, you're, you start to slowly creep up your calorie yeah. intake, right? Super important. And man. so if, if for about a week though, you pull that food scale out, pull out your pen and paper, your journal. You, and the other thing that happens is you start just like picking up random snacks more often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to the office, somebody's got donuts, you grab one. No yeah. Biggie. You lose the focus. You know, oh, I'll get a butterfinger out of the, out of yeah. the, out of the bowl. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You start, yeah. So pull that journal out, pull it down, re-download the app on your phone, there log in, track your food for but one week. Dust it off. Yep. And track it for a week or for a day. Yeah. Even one day. Yeah. yeah. A week's I, good I though. I do one day every week. Oh, you do? Okay. Where, um... At least one day every single week where I weigh everything I eat. Yeah. And then one that day is the day that I prep my meals for the next four days. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So 
Sunday is my day where everything gets weighed um, Mm -hmm. that goes into my mouth. Right. And it kind of keeps me, it keeps me leveled off. That's right. Yeah. And so, yeah, Daryl's method's great once a week. That's one day per week. I'm like, I like to do it for one week because, because the problem in nothing against like your method, but the problem that people are going to run into with only doing it one day is every day is different. Right. If you go through a week, you're going to experience a work day. You're going to experience a day day off. off, You're going to experience a family day. Yeah. You know, all these days lead to different habits yeah. and mm-hmm. different schedules different to navigate right you know you have a weekend you need to do it on the weekend and the weekday sure you know so so these these Very things important you know, yeah. do it on the weekend and the weekday <laughs> super important All so right. um but yeah quick review quick review before we head out uh you know there's pros and cons to this uh pros awareness help create a baseline and leads to the ability to make outcome decision making uh outcome based decision making cons it does require effort make sure you watch your relationship with your food you can use a pen and paper, more simple, more straightforward, or you can use an app, get a little bit more advanced, have a heavy hitters list, pre-portioned foods. And just remember, you don't have to do this forever, but break the food scale back out or your journal or, or whatever method mm-hmm. you're using every Check once yourself. in a while. Check yourself and yep. then, and then keep growing. Yep. All right, guys. Sound good. Let's take this thing out. Sean, you right. like it? Yeah. You I like it? it I love good. it. I think it sounds good. Guys. <laughs> oh. A little louder audience today. Was that was that laughter? Yeah, you get some extra people in the crowd. Yeah, there's a couple <laughs> more people. I love there, it, man. guys. Track your food. Leave us a like. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Share. Share. Review. Review. <laughs> Tell your grandma. <laughs> <laughs>